morning. He's here. He is here. This morning. Seeing you guys this morning. And all them kids cleared out and they emptied the room almost. You guys have a good week had a really good week we've been working on the daycare trying to get it ready and up and running and we got a deadline now so they the ladies gave me a deadline date so now i gotta kick it in gear it's always good to have a deadline date and that way it pushes you a little harder you know if you have no reason to get up in the morning i have a reason to get up but some people don't have a reason to get up in the morning this gives me an extra reason to get up and get moving and work late but I'm excited. God's got us on a journey, and it's going to be great. You guys love taking trips, don't you? You guys like driving on your trips or, or flying? I like to drive. I love driving. Shelly would just rather fly, get from A to B really fast, I want to drive and take all these different routes. And, and um, you know, life is a journey. But in life's journey, we can get sidetracked. You ever been sidetracked? Headed one fun place, you get going other ways all around. Almost every, every trip that Shelly and I take is like that. We get, I get sidetracked. She's centered up on where she wants to be, especially if we're heading to the ocean. She's like wanting to get in the water, and I'm like, we'll be there when we get there. And I like seeing all the little towns and uh, the trip along the way. That's my my joy, and so. In the Bible, it talks about a, a clan of people, the Israelite people, that 40 years, they were on a journey. They got sidetracked quite a bit. And we're on a journey. And we have to be careful that we do not get sidetracked. God has us on a journey to get to point B, point H, which is heaven. To be centered up with what he has for us and what he wants us to do. He's looking for a hungry people. Been advertising the Caneo class, so just a, a hungry people to want more of him, want more of knowledge of what he has. And I believe that that's going to help you guys dig in deeper, to want more of him. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 16. Start reading at verse 1, 3. Says, then they set out from Elam, and all the congregation of the sons of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the fifteenth day of the second month, listen, the fifteenth day of the second month. After the departure from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation, all of them started grumbling and complaining against Moses and Aaron because they were taking them into the wilderness and they just said that you're going to take us here to die, starve us to death. And they said this. He said that they would have rather stayed where they were in the land of Egypt Set by the pots of meat, when they had bread to the fullest, but they brought them out to the wilderness to kill them, what they thought. Is that crazy? God frees them from where they were because they griped and complained from where they were, and God gets them freedom from where they were, and 15 days into the second month, they are already complaining. What do you do when God frees you? Do you want to go back to where you were? Or do you want to stay free? Some people go back. and Some people walk in freedom. I like walking in freedom. It feels better. It looks better. It tastes better. It is better. I want you to know this morning 
that God can do anything for you that he desires, anything. It doesn't matter. If you're hungry, he'll feed you. The word of God says that he'll feed you. If you're thirsty, he'll give you something to drink to the point he'll bust a hole in a rock and give you a drink. He'll rain food from the sky if that's what it takes. He'll even bring a cloud by day and a cloud by night of fire to guide you along the path. He is the light. He is the way. You ever have a river parted for you? Or a sea parted for you? He'll do all that too. Just to free his people. He'll move a mountain to free you. Some of you have had many, many mountains moved in your life. Yet you walk back and back up. Back up on what God has for you. And I want you to know this morning that he's going to do these things in obedience and out of obedience. Whether you're obedient to him or not, he's still going to give you these things. He's a God that loves you. He wants relationship with you. He wants you to stand in the center of his will for you. However, it is up to you on how far you go with God. I can't get you there other than I can tell you about things, talk to you about things. But in your own mind, it's up to you to get you to that center place of God. It's up to you. No one else can... No one else can tell you. They can pray with you. They can persuade you. They can talk to you. They can love on you. But in in the end, it's up to you to make that choice. To get right or get left. God has a path for each one of us. You might look at your life right now and think, where am I at? What am I doing? What is the path that God has me on? I've did that so many times in my life. I've, I've like, God, where, what, what is going on? What are we doing? What are you doing right now with me? What's your heart saying for me? What's your life saying for me? What do you want me to do? And as I get into prayer with him, as I seek his face, as I, I, I mean, I love praying to God. I love getting down on my knees. I love seeking his face. I love knowing him more and more each day. And that's what he desires for you. And that's what it's going to take for you to get from point A to point B without being sidetracked. Knowing Jesus with everything in you. I've never been more centered up in my life than I am right now. I've never been more centered up with Jesus in my life than I am right now. You guys know some of my history, some of my past. If the road was here, I was either here or here. I would cross it every now and then. Maybe get that high moment and like, wow, then walk right away from it. Cross back over and go, wow, walk away from it. So no matter where you are today, no matter what is going through your mind, the goal today is to get on the path. Point A to point B without being sidetracked. I mean, think about it. 40 years in the desert, walking around. 529 miles. 40 years. We can walk 529 miles in six and a half days. So six and a half days that we could have walked and got from point A to point B It took them 40 years. Why? Because all the grumbling, complaining, the sidetracks, self-centeredness, all those things were part of it. Gimme, 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 gimme. I want more, I want more, I want more. If they would have just wanted him and been obedient to him, they would have got to point A to point B in six and a half days. Enjoy the rest of their life. You know you can walk around the world if it's walkable, if there's enough earth. You can walk around the world 
in 364 days. So 40 times they could have walked around the world. 40 times. Completely around the world, 40 times. But they got sidetracked. My question to you today is, are you sidetracked? Are you in the center of God's will or are you sidetracked? Listen, I am 53 this year, 53 years old. And it's taken me my whole life to get to this point. I have been so sidetracked in life. Even when I thought I was on the right path, I was sidetracked. Because the enemy will do that. He'll, he'll get you to think you're on the right path, going the right direction. And you're headed that way, but you're not on the path that you need to be on. You're headed that to heaven. It's not stopping that, but you're not on the path that he needs you to be on. And what happens is when we get to the right or to the left, we cross that path, we miss out on the blessings that he has for us. And we also miss out on the people that he has for us to minister to. If you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs 4.25 and 27. It says, let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet and all the ways will be established. And do not turn to the right or the left. Turn your foot from evil. Five twenty one says this for the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord. The ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he watches paths. The Lord guides our path. He levels our path. He instructs our path. He is all about our path. And we can get so sidetracked with the world of what's going on today in the world. I mean, think of it. Just a few years back, we had a president that they were, that they were trying to take him and convict him three different times, impeaching him of all these accusations, and yet they have not found one to be true with the evidence. And we have a president. Listen, this is all a sidetrack show. This is all a distraction to get us off of the main thing that's going on. Now we have a president that they've got evidence of criminal activity, but yet they're turning a blind eye to it. So, the news... And I have not been over, I've not been watching much of a lady. I didn't even know there was a big storm in Terre Haute. I didn't know my son didn't have power until they called me for like, still, they don't have power. Um, and so I didn't even know that until they called me and told me, oh, just a wind blew. But man, it, they're in a natural disaster or something. They're, they're in a state of emergency in Terre Haute, Indiana. And so I didn't even know that until, because I haven't been watching the news. I've been staying away from TV as much as, I'm watching Little House in the Prairie now. Just to get my shut down. Little house in the prairie. I'm just to get my shut down away from ministry. I used to watch all these cop shows and all this stuff, you know, but then I thought, man, I'm watching all this stuff that I'm against. All these things, watching people get murdered and, you know, they're solving a murder, but I'm, a, I'm not for that. So I just, I'm watching my eyes, what my eyes are set, what I set before my eyes. The Word of God says, set no evil thing before your eyes. And so I've been careful to watch, so now I'm down to a little house on the prairie. Mary, she pulled four eyes and she hit her glasses. But that's okay because I want to be centered up with him. I want to know what he has for me. I want to know what God wants for me. And the less time I'm in television, the more time I spend with him, the more time I spend pondering on his thoughts for me, on his ways for me the more time I spend watching my path, seeing where I'm going, what I'm doing, letting him speak to me and tell me about the sidetracks that I'm on, little things. He's like, that's a rabbit trail. That's a sidetrack. Get back on track. 
Because I do that. I mean, I'm, I'm a human being. And I get sidetracked. I don't want to claim OCD or whatever. It's AC, what is it? ACDC, no OCD, what is it? I don't want to claim that, but I get sidetracked sometimes, guys. Kelly will tell me, get back on track. Back on track. She does it when we travel. Back on the road we're going on. I like this one here. See all the trees and the rivers and all that. And then she'll stop and she'll say, take a picture. Take a picture of this. Let's get a picture of this. I'm like, I thought you wanted to get on the road. Well, I want to get a picture of this. We come back from, the, from California and, and we're driving. So when we lived in the RV and we picked up the RV in, in uh, Palm Springs. She's like, why would anybody want to live here? It was hot, hotter than hot. And so we're driving this RV, and, and uh, we, we hit every aspect of weather you could possibly hit, from storms, from hell, to sleet, to, sleet, to rain, to snow, to winds, to part of the top of it ripped off, and we had to get, get, get it all fixed. And so, But she's like, how can people live out here? Yet she wanted to stop and get pictures of everything that was out there. Because it's beautiful. I like getting sidetracked when we're traveling. She don't. And that's okay. But in our walk with Christ, we must center up. We must not get sidetracked because our sidetracked in Christ is going to cost souls from heaven. And I don't know if you agree with me with that or not, that, that, that when we get sidetracked, people will lose out on heaven. But I'm telling you right now, the Lord showed me that to be true. Imagine it. Imagine if you're centered up with God, everything that you're supposed to be doing. What He wants to do for you and the people He wants to bring into your lives. But we get sidetracked with drugs, alcohol, things of the world. Listen, if I, if, if I was to take this chair right here, and if I was to take this chair, I'm going to take it. And if I was to set it right here, And we know that Jesus is on the throne. Yet we put all of our things in life. They're good things. Some of them are good things. Some of them are not. He reigns on the just and the unjust. But we put these things in our life. And so God is sitting here. And all of a sudden, you have all of your fun, your activities, all these things that, that, that you do and you like to do and you love to do. And it's okay to do but you find this taking more time out of your life than it needs to take, and all of a sudden, God becomes a back burner because all your stuff is in front. And no one can even see God through you because you got all this stuff in the way. Some of it's good, some of it's not, but it's in the way of God. We have to start clearing stuff out of our lives. We have to start clearing, I mean literally clearing stuff out of our lives. Kelly and I have been praying for a while about, um, out, about my project at home because it's a big project. And, and I was all excited about it and I've been all excited about it. Then all of a sudden the Lord says, this is, I don't want to do this no more. So we're taking a different direction with our, with our home. And um, we're just going to tear it down. It needs to be tore down. But no, we're just, we're just taking a different direction because we want to be so centered up with God and we cannot have one more distraction in our life to take us away from the things of God, to take us away from what God really truly wants us to do. And me working on that house, you know, we've been working. We, I started, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the truth. I started working on that house thinking that I was going to have time to do the house. Okay, we've been living, listen, we've been living maybe a 300 square, maybe 400 square feet, maybe 400 square feet of a house for the past almost five years now. Is it five years? Four years? The remodel's been two years? Okay, two years. Sorry. Two years. Sorry you've been living in 400 square feet. It seems like five. But we've been building out ever since we started. Like we started 
from the park, then the youth center, set up tear down to over there three years, set up, I mean, we just building, tearing walls out, tearing another wall out, tearing another wall out, finding there was another place next door that we didn't know about, and cut holes in the walls and poured concrete. Then move over here, build this. So we've been constantly building, and I haven't had uh, one moment to go home and, and build at home. And so we're at the point now, it's like I, I, I don't have time to build a home because I've, I feel like I've been sidetracked, not with building the things out of God, but things in my own life. So I'm weeding things out. And, and that's what the Lord wants you guys to do is weed some things out of your life so you can actually get on track with what he has for you. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through him. He's the only way. We need to be telling people that. That Jesus is the way. And we can tell them by the way we live our lives. Have you ever seen someone that, that you know is a Christian? You've seen them and you're like, man, that person's a Christian. Have you ever told them, wow, I see Jesus in you? I make it a point if I see, I mean, I'll run to the door. If I see Jesus in somebody, I will make it a point to go tell them. I make it a point every time. And it changes them. It changes it changes their day. That, that one little statement, see Jesus in your eyes. Jimmy hears it all the time. See Jesus in your eyes. It changes their world. We need to start centering up so we can recognize those things in people. The value that people have. That they love Jesus. That they're struggling in their lives. We need to be able to recognize that, setting our stuff aside to be able to recognize someone hurting, someone, I am so, right now, I'm to the point in my life that, and I'm a seer anyhow, and I'm a feeler anyhow, um, something happened this week, and, um, and I told Shelly that I saw it before it happened. You hear me? I told her I saw it before it happened. That's how centered up I am with Jesus. He always gives me a two-week heads up on anything that's going down in the church. So if you plan on leaving, know that I got a two-week heads up to talk to you, love on you, persuade you not to. No, I don't even do that. Because I'm centered up, I can hear the voice of God. I know what he's saying to me. I mean, do you guys get to hear God on a daily basis just like talk to you? If you don't, I'm telling you right now, get in the word of God. Get in a time of prayer. Sacrifice some sleep. And let him have his way with you. It has to be that way, guys. It has to be that way. To be centered up with him, knowing everything that he has for you. We get so easily sidetracked. If I was speaking to you right now and people were running around the room, people were running around the room, people were running around the room, and I'm trying to give you a message why people were running around the room, you realize that you're going to be so distracted by the people moving around the room, you're not even going to hear what I'm saying. Because I'm trying to say something to you, and God is trying to say something to you, but you can't even focus because the people moving around the room. How many things do you have in your life that do that? How many things do you have in your life that bring that kind of a distraction that when things are going on, things are happening, you can't center up? I am so, I'm so good at it now, I can study with the TV on in the background. Doesn't even bother me. Someone can talk, doesn't even bother me. Shelly, on the other hand, she's centered up, but we work different. Our minds work different. And Shelly has to have, like, she will tell me, listen, I'm not even exaggerating. She will tell me to mute the TV so she could text somebody. 
I'm like, mute the TV so you can text somebody. Go in the other room. But I'm serious. She will tell me to mute the TV to text somebody. Is that true, Shelly? Because she needs it to be quiet. In her center is quietness. Some people are like that. I can be centered up with all this stuff going on. It didn't move me a bit that these guys were moving around. Start throwing balloons around the room. It's not going to move me. Now, I'll tell you where it will move me if I'm over here worshiping you're doing that. Because I'm in a freak out mode when I'm worshiping. That stuff was so loud in my ears. The, 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 um, my pads were so loud in my ears. It was drowning everything out, so I don't even know how it even come out. I don't know how anything, I don't know even what it sounded like. I was hearing, <laughs> the whole time. But we got it. I think, I think, I think it all come out okay. I don't know. But that's what the Lord does. I mean, I'm so centered up. I'm so centered up. And when I get here in the morning, I'm praying, I'm, God, your will be done. You do what you're doing. You do what, let it not be me. Let it be you. And even in the music, let it be you, let it not be me, because if it's me, it's going to be so messed up that these guys are going to walk out of the room. So I just let him move like that in me. I trust him with it. When I say that last, when I strum that last chord and say that last word, it's like, you know, it's like a thousand pounds of bricks lifting off of me. That's how I really feel when I'm worshiping, just so you guys know that. I like, I like what I'm doing right here. I like to talk to you guys about this. I'm not, I'm not the best at it. I'm not going to claim to be the best. You know, um, Paul was that way. They, they would have rather heard his, they would rather him send him a letter than, than to come and talk to him. Um, I don't know if he had a lift or something. I don't know what he had, but um, do we know why they didn't like hearing Paul? Does anybody know why? Maybe he scalded him too much, and it was like laid the law down pretty hard on him. But he would write letters and just so love him. And so like, we'd just rather hear your letters. We can dissect that. But when you're in somebody's face and you're telling them the truth about what Father says, it's, it's a little bit harder that way. So I encourage you this morning. Simple message. We're all on a path. We're all on a journey. And heaven is our journey. Heaven is the end game. Heaven is the end game for what God has for you and I. But I encourage you for this next move that God's doing, for you guys to weed some stuff out of your lives. Weed some stuff out of your lives. It's so valuable to the kingdom that we weed things out of our lives that we can have. The people in front of us that God has for us. Because when you're crossing that path, you're missing. You're missing them. And I've missed it. But man, I make every opportunity to bless somebody, to talk to someone, to love on someone. We went out for lunch the other day. I don't even know, was it midnight supper? I don't even know what it was time we went out. Um, but we went out, um, I don't even know what day it was. It's, everything's, I've been working so much. I don't even know what day it was. And... Um, Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Okay. Thank you, Shelly. And there was a young girl there, and, and we go to um, Wings, etc. Great place to eat. And we know everybody in there, Shelly and I do. And, and, um, but we've, we've built a culture in there that when we come in there, we bless very well. So they know when we walk in. I mean, they, they, and this is the thing. They don't fight over who gets us. It's just they know where we sit and whoever's waitress of that day. They're, they're like, they know you're going to be blessed today. And I'll even see a waitress having a bad day. And I'll ask the Lord, can I bless her or him? And when he gives me the okay, I go and I bless him. And usually I'll give him a $100 bill. And I'll say, he loves you. And they'll tell me, I only had one table today. I've been here all day and I've only had one table because if you get in a certain area, you might not get people sitting in there because they sit in the same spots every time. I only had one table today. And I said, well, I could tell that you were discouraged. I said, but don't let that move you. Know that God's always going to take care of you. When we were there the other day, um, the young girl, 
gave her, and, and thank you for buying my supper, Uve. <laughs> but I gave her $100 for a tip. And she just, she's like, that's going to pay a bill. That's going to pay one of my bills. That's how valuable it is that we pour into people. That they know who we are. Even your children will know where to go when they need help. They might shun it all the way until that point, but they know where to go to get help. My kids will always call. They're like, I don't want to do God out, whatever. But when they need God, they, they know who to go to. And the world's going to be that way too. When they need... There's this, this place here, what God's doing here, there's people that need healing in here, Dawsonville, everywhere that these fires are being lit up. There's people that need healing, and they are going to these places to get healing, and they're getting healed. They're getting touched. We had Ty get in the water. You know, Ty got in the water. Listen, it was so good to get Ty in the water. We've been waiting to get him in the water forever. Did he walk out? No. Is he going to? Yes. So what we're going to start doing for Ty is we're going to fast three days before the water immersion. Because the Lord says some things don't come up by prayer and fasting. And that's our duty for Ty. That's our duty for him. But we got him in the water, got him to stand up. Maybe not on his own, but he was standing up. And his legs were moving in ways they never moved before. Things were happening that never happened. He, he was coming in and out of expressions he had never made before. He had to be there and watch it. So when we're not sidetracked, we're going to be able to see things happen more and more and more and more. Because we're going to hear the voice of God. And what you're going to hear him say is get to the house of the Lord. Get to the house of prayer. Get to the house of worship. Let's put this stuff aside. Even though it's fun. Even though it's okay. Even though you can do it. Because listen, I want you to know when we serve Jesus, we can do anything we want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. Some of those things might not please him. But you can do whatever in the world you want to do. We must get rid of the sidetrack, the thing, the sideshows, the things that Fox, and I'm sure CNN and, and all these other news, I mean, listen guys, don't be fooled. They're taking you where they want you to go. They're letting you believe only what they want you to believe and, and letting you see only what they want you to see. That's how the enemy is going to destroy this world. By the news media. I believe he's going to use the news media as his avenue to deceive us and thinking everything's okay. And it's not. It's not okay in the standards of we should be doing better. It's the church's fault that the world is in the shape that it's in. It's our fault as a whole for not being centered up, for having all the sidetracks and all the stuff. I mean, I mean, who remembers, who remembers when Sundays, nothing was open? I wanted to go back to that. Nothing was open. Oh, you couldn't get gas, you couldn't get food, you couldn't get nothing. Churches were open. And then they were open all the time. You could walk in and out of them as you wanted. You didn't have to lock the doors. Why? Because no one was coming in robbing the sound systems and stealing out of the offering plate and, and trashing the place. I remember those days. Just 50 years ago. Well, 40-something. This younger generation has no idea what that even looks like. To just take a day and be still. This cause all the sidetrack, all the stuff that we have to do that we're allowed to do, that we get to do. And we've created most of it. I mean, they used to have ball games during the week. Now they have ball games on the weekends. Now it seems like Sunday is consumed with all of those things. And it's what the world is conditioned. 
You've got to understand we're being conditioned by the ways of the world. This is not how our grandparents or parents before them thought it should be because the Word of God says it shouldn't be that way. But here we are. So what do we do about it? As a church, what do we do? And I'm not going to condemn you for having a ball game on Sunday or going and doing something on Sunday, eating, whatever. I'm not going to say anything about that. What I am going to say is that we have to center up with the things that God wants us to do. Try not to be real hard here. Because I could start throwing things out there. But I don't want to be judgmental in any way, shape, or form. But I want you to know the Word of God says that we have to get rid of the sideshows and get centered up with Him. How many of you can think of one thing that has sidetracked you from, from God? Like just one thing. How many of you are willing to give that one thing up for God? So what we're going to do? We're going to come up, we're going to give it up. And watch how it shifts your life. Watch how when you give that one thing up, how it will be easy to give the next thing up, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Shelly and I contemplated, listen, we contemplated going back into an RV just to be in an RV because we don't have no yard to take care of, no nothing, no house to take care of, no nothing. Live in an RV, and we're like, well, then where are we going to park it? Well, we can go to Walmart to Walmart, park it, but I don't even think they let you do that anymore. You used to be able to go to Walmart and park your RV, but you can't do that no more, I don't think. We thought about different people's houses. We thought we could go, this is a good way to go visit people from week to week, hey, today we're coming to your house to visit. We're going to park in your driveway. We're going to visit you. You wine and dine. You, eat, you give us something to eat, something to drink. And then we're just going to visit with you. And that way no one can say we never come and visit. We just rotate. We literally, if I've laid that out. We've laid that plan out. We could do this. Then I wanted a little RV. She wanted a little bit bigger RV. And I'm just like, I just want to get a little chiclet behind the truck and, you know, you just lay in and that's it you wanted something that had a few slide houses and stuff I said well this is probably not a good idea we're getting back into the same thing maintenance I'm the one that has to do the maintenance and so I said if you're willing to crawl underneath that thing and fix some stuff and climb in it I don't know how many times I was in the other RV we had into the engine all the different components I mean I was stuck under there a few times and, and uh, fixing something but that's how much we want to get rid of sidetracks in our lives, side things in our life. That's how much we want to purge things out of our life because we're in a purging season. Listen, God is coming back. Jesus said he's coming back. He's not a liar. And he's truthful. He said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So if you have spot or wrinkle in your life, you better start ironing it out. You better start washboarding it, clean it up because he's coming. Maybe sooner than you think. Some people think that they can wait to the last minute. Oh, I'll get it right in the last minute. Then once Holy Spirit takes us, Randy said, gives us out. You're going to be here without Holy Spirit. Imagine how hard it's going to be then. You have Holy Spirit now to guide you, to show you, to lead you. Imagine then what it's going to be like. So if you don't know Jesus today, come forward. If you want to get to know Jesus better today, pick some things out of your life. And I mean, when you say, when you commit that to him, give it to him. Let him have it. And if for some things you're questionable about, give it to him for 30 days and see what happens. Give him a 30 days. Give this 30 days. And you probably won't want to take it back after 30 days. You guys good? All right. Come and pray. Let's give him, give him three minutes of your time. Three minutes of your time. Turn the ambient music up. Give him three minutes.